Yep, it's definitely raining. <laughs> a lot of the rocks set up in there. I'll take you guys up there in a little bit, but there's a lot of lightning. And with the lightning comes the thunder. Here is it the thunder, then the lightning. <laughs> this, this always happens, right? We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? <laughs> Build a pond. Oh, there, 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 there we go. Is that Jack Foggy? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. It's time for a new camera. Do you think so? <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with it? All that dust in the Well, that's all I hear. Ready? <laughs> now it looks better. Right, there perfect. we go. Jack, where are we? We're back in Texas, Frisco, Texas. We were here back in November of 21. Built this incredible pond. I love the way this is looking. Like they're starting to do some finished work now. The barn that's getting turned into Matt's office is coming along. It's taking shape. They're actually doing spray foam today. The pond looks great. Water is actually clear to the bottom. Like it's working uh -huh. great. The wetland's working great for six months. There's not a stitch of algae. In it. No, it's spotless. So what are we doing back here? Why are we back? back in Texas. Back to phase two, we are doing 150 feet of streams, waterfalls, fountainscape, <laughs> crossings. It's gonna be epic. It's awesome. So here's the pond. You guys remember waterfall, really cool wetland up there, stairs. You've seen all the other episodes. Here's the big pond. They've started the patio in here. The office is coming along, cool stepping stones. And then our job, while we're out here for the next week, or I'm out here for the next week, Jack's out here for two weeks is to finish a stream that goes all the way up to the front of the house. So we're hoping to get someplace up in here by the time I leave. Maybe. <laughs> we're not Maybe. Gonna, we're not gonna be done. <laughs> All right, buddy, we're out here again. We're getting ready to excavate out our stream. Yep. Tell me a little bit about like your thought with the stream and what we're looking to achieve in the next eight days here. So we've got this really cool backdrop of all these live oak trees that we want to twist this stream through. And in order to do that and make it look natural, we want to think about how water would naturally move. So we're going to be coming through this area. We want to get up against this fire pit area that's being built over here. So we got a gigantic fire pit being built right here. Manuel has been here doing all the block work. We're going to run our stream right up against the back of that. That's actually gonna be a seat right there. So when you're sitting on that wall, the water will be coursing right next to you. From there, it's gonna be dropping off into like probably a, a foot high waterfall, something like that. But we're gonna use big boulders to make it look extremely natural. From there, we actually have to cross over this water course. This is only one of the crosses we're dealing with today, but we're coming out of that fire pit. We gotta get from there over to here, and that's gonna involve a crossing. We're not sure yet if we're gonna do a big slab or maybe we'll do some stepping stones. And honestly, the rocks will dictate kind of how that's going to work out. It looks better with stepping stones, that's the way it will go. But imagine water falling into a pooling area. Over time, what it's going to do is going to start excavating out whatever soil is there that it can until it gets to bedrock. We want to kind of mimic that. So when that water comes off of here, this will be a deeper pooling area and then it'll shallow out. It takes all that excavated soil and it shoves it forward. The inertia of the water in a natural stream would push all that material to the next place where it stops it. And that's where we have a nice big eddy on the far end. Now, in order for us to replicate that, we're going to be carving out a big area right where you're standing, Brian. Imagine that soil comes through here in a natural situation, and it gets pushed up against here until it can't push anymore. Then the water changes direction, right? How we're going to make that happen, we're going to take a big boulder out on this tight turn here, and we're going to shove the water out around it. That would make it look like it naturally carved this way. So this might actually get a little bit of beaching action, probably a couple of big boulders built in. Then we got our change of direction. Then we're going like hard 90 this way, and we're going to replicate that process again. So the water pushed its way over here, stacked up all its soil, and then it made a turn again. And we'll again take a big boulder, make it so it moves around here, and then it can dump. We're talking like a very small waterfall going. It's not even gonna be a waterfall, more like forcing over cobbles yep. and stuff into here, just get some movement and education. And then from there it goes back into our pond, which is gonna be a great addition here. Then of course we're going like another 80 feet up towards <laughs> the house, but I think today we'll focus on this part. Jack, on a scale of one to ten, how excited are you to be back here? Here. Texas weather, it's like upper 60s. I gotta tell you, I've been thinking about this job since we left. Yeah. <laughs> like I wanted to finish it all in one shot, but being back here and being kind of refreshed and rejuvenated, we went hard at this pond, like real hard. 12 days, we built that masterpiece over there. Super excited with the way that turned out. Now that Matt got further along with the barn and that whole renovation, I can't wait to see this finish. So we are gonna make this happen in the next two weeks. That's awesome. So it's the two of us today. Tomorrow we have the Alan Decker. The Alan Decker. The Alan Decker. Joined 
between us. It's gonna be the three of us out here for a week. I think we're easily all the way up to the house, probably disassembling sidewalk that goes up to the front door. Oh, I kind of forgot about that part, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah we've got some work to do. <laughs> We hit our goal. Jack, you excavated all this stuff up. This is why really sometimes having a five guy crew just doesn't help that much. Today we got all of this excavated all the way up to the house. We set our different elevations. Tomorrow Alan comes in. We'll get this liner stretched out. We may or may not seam the liner. We may or may not set some boulders tomorrow, but at least we got the infrastructure all done here. A couple things I wanted to point out was again how important that transit is over there. We're shooting our water levels and we base our water level all off of what our weird stone is right here we shoot this height everything's gonna back up to this height in here so if we shot that believe it or not this area right here is the exact same level as that stone over there that corner over there is four inches deeper this corner over here is seven inches deeper and we wanted to create that because when we were visualizing the water coming in here remember right here we want to get this big peninsula rock that comes out here which causes that water to race that way eroding away what would be four inches of soil over on that side as that water sweeps through that bend over there we'll get another big boulder kind of like right in this area pushing that water into that bank which erodes away seven inches of soil over there just like we study streams in nature so water was coming into this curve the water's scoured out this area and then it moves faster this way through here and the thing i'm excited about is normally what we do with our streams is we dig the whole thing six to eight inches lower than our weir stone and then we get kind of this lazy river looking through here because we have areas here that'll actually end up being higher than water level this water is going to go ripping over the top of the gravel really causing a faster current into that space over in there same thing is happening back up and through there so that whole is basically all the same level and we're gonna come in and as we do pinch points with rocks flat work down and below it's gonna give it all kinds of different direction I can't wait to get this thing running <laughs> all right everybody it is I don't know Saturday no Sunday 
No, yesterday was, today is Monday. Monday, we're expecting a day full of rain. Yesterday, um, we got a bunch of stuff done. We got everything excavated. We got the liner seamed. We got things covered. We're ready to start setting rocks. I'll show you a little bit of that excavation here, and more importantly, the liner and everything else out here. We also have the Allen Decker out here. So we're gonna get going on this. Hopefully try to beat uh, the weather and set some of these massive boulders in here, start shaping out this stream. It'll be a super interesting day. I don't know how excited I am about working in the rain. I'm wearing a t-shirt, which was not the smartest decision, but we'll see. I think we'll just kind of muscle through it and go as far as we can and hey, wish us luck. <laughs> So anyways, if you can remember from before, right in here, we had all the liner bunched up. These pipes were just dumping in right here. We were able to excavate all of that out, roll this liner all the way back up into here, and then we had to do a seam right in here. We're getting ready to set our first rock. Like we said, we've been talking about this one here. So we found one that's a little higher on this side. It kind of tapers down, which is perfect. And then I'm guessing we'll add some more like rip rappy type stuff to really continue that like peninsula all the way out. Remember the purpose of that is so when that water comes down through here, it hits that rock, pushes that water out back into here. So we're gonna set this one. Then after that, we'll probably come in, set the one behind it, and then really just start working this way. Then I think we'll come over to this side, do the same thing, which causes that water to go back over into that space really some height over in here also creates a little bit of a dam if you will causing that water to want to back up in through there I think it'll make more sense once we get the rocks in here and more importantly when it gets running <laughs> careful around these stones too because they're so soft Alan that they will like break sometimes Definitely raining. <laughs> no doubt about it. Well, we got pretty far. Lightning started coming. We got a lot of the rocks set up in there. I'll take you guys up there in a little bit, but there's a lot of lightning. And with the lightning comes the thunder. Here's the thunder, then the lightning. <laughs> this, this always happens, right? It's coming down. We've yeah. never done a job where we don't get some kind of crazy no, weather. No. Ever. And this is like the worst place to get it because this dirt just sticks to your shoes like crazy. And it's going to stay like that all week. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't rather be doing anything else. Yeah, right? <laughs> Thanks for coming out, Alan. Oh, this yeah. is a blast. Great or not. It's good. Kind of sloppy, you know, <laughs> we got a little bit of rain out here. Everything's pretty muddy. See the boots, but we're still mussing our way through it. We've got just some awesome, awesome rocks we're working with. Check these out. 
just fantastic. So this is that peninsula that we talked about, how it's gonna come this way. We set another one in here to really kick that water out here. And now we've got this beauty right here. I wanna get this guy set. Come on. Come on, I'll show you what a waterfall looks like. Well, <laughs> in my head anyway. Yeah. <laughs> this is a frame rock slash waterfall rock. We want water to come off of here and mostly we're hoping this little hump here is gonna stop it from going onto our step. But we wanna have majority of the water coming off here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come in front with a rock about like this high. That's gonna give us that multi-level. So some of the water will come off of this, a lot of it's gonna come off here. In order for that to happen though, if we just put this rock in here, all the water's gonna come off the lower side, right? So we're gonna come in behind this this one and use like a flat rock and high side of here and slope back this way. What that's gonna do is when the water comes through here, the inertia is gonna put it right up on the rock, but if we tilt it the right way, it'll push that around here, feeding most of the water here and it'll still bleed like down onto this rock and give us like that multiple cascade effect. I love this thing. There's so much character in this rock and to be able to use it for the waterfall as well as framing these steps, it's gonna be so freaking cool. It obviously takes a lot more time, right? We saw the natural high spot. You see the low spot here and so we're using gravel and getting this in and you have to carve them in place and as we get up into here we're gonna have to carve more stuff in place oh getting a rock that weighs like three thousand pounds to do what you want to do it takes time yep and it's a lot of like moving the strap around and picking up one side getting gravel underneath it and that's the reason we use this gravel so we use this stuff here it's like a it's a crushed gravel i like it because it locks in real nice but when you're using stuff like this you have to use multiple layers of rock pack you don't want to have a problem with your liner but this stuff it gives us the ability to set this rock and change the pitch of it and everything without worrying about damaging the liner. And so this waterfall, like really this little, what are, what are we gonna call this? Like a 15 inch waterfall? Yeah. Some place in here. The reason we're spending so much time in this area is because we have these stepping stones coming across this area and then leading back over into there. So everybody's gonna see this. The rest of this stream, there's almost 65 feet of stream before we get up to the front door up there. That's not gonna be really visible. You're you're gonna see it from here as you walk up. And the idea is that it's like heavy, heavy landscape on both sides. So only from here do you really see that stream cutting through. And then we gave it a ton of shape. So it really just kind of disappears and then comes back that way. And um, well, it's catching from different areas in the landscape, like sitting in the fire pit area. That's gonna be a seat wall. You'll be able to see the stream there. From the front door, you got a shot right down the middle to see it. And then from the house, I mean, it's just not being able to see it from all those places. That's where the mystery comes in. And that's what makes it look like a natural cut through that actually wore out the earth and left behind these big boulders. Nice. Whoa. <laughs> that's a day of rain right there. Well, we set our last frame rock. I can't wait to show it to you tomorrow. We killed it today, despite the weather. We killed it. Alan Decker, Jack Harju, Brian Helfrich, 31 stones, a little over, I don't know, some of those stones weigh 4,000 pounds a piece, 5,000 pounds a piece. So you guys do the tonnage, don't really care. Just 31 stones. We got everything set in this twisting stream all the way up to the waterfall. Tomorrow, we start buttoning up that waterfall, finishing up some of our stepping stones and then moving into the next section of stream which is 65 feet long i don't think we'll get that whole thing done tomorrow but we'll get a big dent in hey we'll see you tomorrow bye